Jesse, this is your custom uh, built trailer package. Put the tank on the front like you wanted it. We came off the tank with a two inch dump valve so you can drain this tank before you transport it. On the top of the tank, we have a two inch fill. I, I didn't know what you'd want to hook up to it, so I just left it two inch male pipe thread or female pipe thread and put a plug in it. You have a garden hose fill on the other side. If you're not getting enough water through that, you could always feed two garden hoses to it. Just let me know and we can, maybe we can send you the floats out if you want to put a float on it. Once you get in front of the tank, you have the two straps that hold the tank down. If you ever wanted to, for any reason, you could pop this tank off, lift it off and on the trailer pretty easy. Off the tank, you have a supply line that runs to each machine. The supply line is made from three quarter inch reinforced hose. This stuff is no kink. In line with that, we put a filter with a screen. You can easily take this loose, pull the filter out, clean it out. If you start to lose pressure, your machine starts to shake a little bit, you're gonna wanna check those filters. You see the lines, they feed around here and there's a three-way valve. This basically controls whether the water is gonna flow from this big tank here, or there's a small stainless steel tank located on the skid platform. I would say you're almost always gonna wanna run off the big tank, but if you ever get into that situation in the winter time, you need to antifreeze these units. I know it doesn't get cold down there, but if you go do a job up north or something, give me a call and I'll tell you how to use this as an antifreeze tank. Coming off the three-way valve, there's another Y strainer filter. So here again, if you're losing pressure, you wanna check both filters, because more than likely you got debris built up in them. Now up here you're gonna see we have the unloader. I'm sure you know about unloaders being this isn't your first pressure washer. We run a secondary bypass line off the unloader. So not only do we run the bypass off the pump, back around through this float tank, back around and into the pump, we also circulate it back here to the big, the big tank. This gives you longer run times in bypass mode. The most important thing about this secondary bypass when you're running your high pressure chemical, you need to shut this off. Because what's gonna happen is if you have your high pressure chemical line open and you have this open, every time you let go of the trigger, it's gonna pump soap back into your tank. And it won't take long to suck your tank for soap dry. For transit, we have your high pressure soap line bundled up here. Basically to operate your high pressure soap, just clip the line loose. You got a screen here. Stick it down into your five gallon bucket of soap. Up here on the front of the machine, you have a valve that says chemical. You open that up, depending on how far you open it, that's how much soap it's gonna apply. All the way is gonna be a very heavy soap mixture. All the way shut is gonna be none at all. Somewhere in between, you can meter it. It actually has a lockout screw here on the center, and there's more about that lockout screw in your manual. Okay. As we move towards the back of the trailer, here you can see the front of machine number one. You flip this open, here's your key switch, all your control lights. You have your uh, holes here for your number 12 nozzles. These are the nozzles for a single gun operation. I'm gonna take these number 12 nozzles and I'm gonna send them to you. These are what you would run when you were running one gun. So when you run two, you run two number sixes. And if you get one guy that puts a 12 in and another guy that puts a six in, you can have a lot of problems. So I'm gonna mark these special and you just put them aside and if you're ever gonna run one gun, then you know you got them. <coughs> Here on the control panel of the machine is the adjustable thermostat control. With this system, especially since you're running two operators, I would always keep it set at 180. No point in going any hotter than that. One guy lets go of the trigger, and you got this thing cranked all the way, it's not gonna take it long to get up to that 200 degree steam mode. Now you have your outlet to your hose reels, comes off the machine, is fed down along the back with the rest of the hoses, and goes back to the hose reel. The front machine, hose reel on the right. The back machine, hose reel on the left. To start it, You'll turn the key switch into the on position and you wait. There's a glow plug light up here and you wait until that goes out, usually about 20 seconds.
can see the exhaust, we've taken it, we've ran it down through the floorboard, and it comes out of the back side of the trailer like I told you about. The trailer itself is a heavy duty implement style trailer with tandem 5200 pound axles and a gooseneck mounted in the front. This machine, exactly like this machine, in the way that it has a three-way valve, the float tank, the bypass back to the holding tank, and same thing here. I can't stress this enough. If you're using the high pressure chemical, make sure you shut this extra bypass line off. Otherwise, you'll fill your holding tank in the front up with soap. On the back of the, back of the trailer, you can see we've mounted our cock style hose reels. And uh, well, that's about everything other than firing it up and showing you how it runs. Um, basically, you want to start the machine first, let the machine get running, and then flip the burner on switch. And remember, the burner will only fire when you pull the trigger. Yeah, see, it's like I was telling you, when this machine first starts up, when a guy lets go, you hear it drop a little. If you notice before it dropped a little bit more, when it gets warmed up, it runs smooth. The voltage never drops below 110 volts. It doesn't seem to be a problem. I think it's the idle up. When it senses it's not pushing as much power, it just naturally idles the engine down. It's doing what it's supposed to do. And then as it warms up, it doesn't take as much power to push both of them, so you don't notice the drastic difference. You can see this thing really pushes water, though. This is just uh, one nozzle full power through the machine. Whenever you're done running, Go ahead and cool the machine down, flip the burner off, and just run it till the wand becomes cool to the touch. It'll go a lot faster if you open up both tubes. Oh, hey, do we got a bucket of soap to do the downstream injector? You also have a downstream chemical injector. That puts the soap in after the coil and the pump. So basically it mounts in line with your hose reel on the back side. We'll show you that in just a minute. You drop it in your soap. As long as you're washing under high pressure, no soap comes out. To get soap, open the wand up all the way. We're leaving the pressure below 700 PSI. At that point, it'll draw soap. The way the soap injector works with this system, both guys will put soap on at the same time. But typically the best way we found to apply soap is with the hand pump up sprayer. You have a lot better control of the soap and you'll use less saving you money and time in the long run. Then when you want to go to wrench, you just go back up to full pressure. And for the, for the first little bit, you're still going to have soap come out that's in the line. So for your first 100, 200 feet of hose, there'll still be soap. Dave, take it to wrench. 